Hi folks, how are we doing? I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, Unitarian Minister serving congregations in Altrincham and Ermston in the northwest of England. I hope you are finding the love and witnessing the blessings in life in these difficult times. It is hard, my friends, but we are all in this together. I'm offering these devotions as my little bit of hope, playing my part, being a part of the solution, doing my bit. They are a balm for the heart, the mind, the spirit and the soul. The title for today's reflection is Palm Sunday, a very human tale. So I invite us to still ourselves together. Let's invite a loving presence to be here amongst us and to awaken from deep, deep within us. I have lit the flame of freedom in this cup of belonging and love and acceptance. Know that you are welcome here, wherever you are, wherever you are being, you are welcome in this loving space. Come join us together, come join with us in this time. Let us be at one. I invite us to join together in just a few moments of prayer. Though thou who are the heart and soul of life, save us from fear, the fear of days and nights yet to be, the idea of the known and the unknown, the fear that builds high walls around our spirits and our lives, the fear that nibbles at the edge of every satisfaction, Free us from the fear that closes in and envelops us, the fear that nibbles at the edge of every satisfaction. Fear, free us from the fear of failure and success, of shame and pain, of death, and the fear of life as well. Open our eyes that we may see thy glory in humbleness and simplicity, commonness strewn generously across our path all our days. May we recognise your loving spirit riding upon a simple beast of burden down the crooked streets of Jerusalem. May we not require the palms of victory and praise, the accolades and shouts of the multitudes to see thy glory in gentleness, patience, loving kindness, and yes, pain and sometimes death. May we see the way of peace, of faith, hope, and of love. Still, may we see that this is still our path, still our way, the path of love and acceptance and belonging. Amen. I'd like to begin today's reflection with an extract from the book, Fail, Fail Again, Fail Better, Wise advice from learn from leaning into the unknown by Pima Chodron. She writes. So I thought I would tell you this little story about Naropo University's founder, Chogyang Trungpa Rinpoche. And my very first one on one interview with him. This interview occurred during the time when my life was completely falling apart. And I went there because I wanted to talk about the fact that I was feeling like such a failure and so raw. But when I sat down in front of him, he said, How is your meditation? I said, Fine. And then we just started talking, superficial chatter, until he stood up and said, It was very nice to meet you, and started walking me to the door. In other words, the interview was over. And so at that point, realising the interview was over, I just blurted out my whole story. My life is over. I have hit the bottom. I don't know what to do. Please help me. And here is the advice Trungpa Rinpoche gave me. He said, well, it's a lot like walking into the ocean and a big wave comes and knocks you over and you find yourself lying on the bottom with sand in your nose and in your mouth. And you are lying there and you have a choice. You can either lie there or you can stand up and start to keep walking out to sea. 
So basically, you stand up because the lying there choice equals dying. Metaphorically, lying there is what a lot of us choose to do at that point. But you can choose to stand up and start walking. And after a while, another big wave comes and knocks you down. You find yourself at the bottom of the ocean with sand in your nose and sand in your mouth. And again, you have the choice to lie there or to stand up and start walking forward. So the waves keep coming, he said, and you keep cultivating your courage and bravery and sense of humour to relate to this situation of the waves and you keep getting up and going forward. This was his advice to me. Trungpa then said, after a while, it will begin to seem to you that the waves are getting smaller and smaller and they won't knock you over anymore. That is good advice. It isn't that the waves stop coming, it's that because you're training holding the rawness of vulnerability in your heart, the waves just appear to be getting smaller and smaller and they don't knock you over anymore. So some thoughts of my own. One of the many blessings of my work is that people tell me things. They really tell you things, things that they perhaps cannot tell other people. They open their hearts to you and somehow find the ability to expose their all too real for human vulnerability. And I'm not just talking about the people I serve, by the way, people I meet in general. Now, I say it's a blessing of my work, but actually this is actually this has happened to me all my life. People, for whatever reason, open up to me. There was a time in my life when this bothered me somewhat. I did not see it as a blessing at all. I would take on board and absorb the pain of others and it would weigh me down. There was a time when I wished above all things to be freed from my sensitivity. It was too much. I saw it as a serious handicap, and one I wish I could have wished away. Thankfully, I don't see it this way. I am as sensitive as I have always been, not more, I, I feel more today than I have ever done. The difference is that I know I don't carry the burden of the suffering of others around me, or at least I don't as much as I used to. This for me is one of the great gifts and blessings of faith and living openly. Life passes through me, as I believe life is meant to. I get knocked over by the waves sometimes, but I get back up. Well, actually, I'm not sure if it just passes through me. More accurately, I think it's, it's fair to say life becomes more integrated within me. And thus life does not weigh me down as much as it used to. But I am not carrying what is not mine to carry. And it's this I have come to believe which allows me to truly be of service to others. To be present with them without becoming consumed by their suffering. It's not my burden but I can walk with them. People speak to me. They open up to me and they tell me things. Most of us carry much pain around with us, many disappointments, so many experiences of betrayal too. Yes, we all know joy and love and acceptance, but we also know betrayal, both by others and of course by ourselves. And perhaps we're being revisited by some of these feelings during this time of physical isolation. If you're feeling them, you're not alone. Several people have shared such feelings with me these last few days. And I was revisited by a couple of spectres myself as everything seemed to go wrong, wrong this last Monday. Thankfully, I was also helped out by, by several angels, angels in human form, of course, who helped me out when I really needed it. They came, they came and did what they could. People have been sharing much with me these last few days. I hope they always feel that they can. What I love about the conversations, as hard as they can be at times, is that what I witness in so many people is true courage as they continue on living and loving despite the many struggles, worries and disappointments. Sometimes we don't always recognise this in ourselves. 
I, but I have seen much courage and love these last couple of weeks, so much that has inspired me, literally filled me with spirit, encouraged me, brought my heart alive, put courage in me, given me heart. What I see in the people I am connected to in this mutual web of love is something I do recognise in myself. I recognise our full and complex humanity, that we are made up of many things. We have all fallen short. We have all fallen down many times, but still we rise. Oh, still we rise, no matter how many waves come. These thoughts bring to mind a wonderful poem by the late, great Maya Angelou. Still I rise. Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me down the, in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I'll walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't take it awful hard, cause I'll laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? To dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Now, of course, I am not an African-American woman. I have not walked in her shoes, but I identify, as I'm sure many of us can. I am sure, no matter how many times the tides have hit us, the waves have come and flattened us, we all continue to rise. Today is Palm Sunday, which marks the beginning of Holy Week, regarded as the most sacred in the whole Christian calendar. And it begins with Jesus entering Jerusalem, riding on the back of a humble donkey or a colt, depending on the gospel account. He is received by the crowds, waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. The crowds welcome Jesus, who they believe will save them. But this does not happen. And just a few days later, he is betrayed, rejected, brutalised and killed. The body is killed, the figure dies. But the love that is left behind lives on. And it is this love that I believe is the true Easter mythos. A love that can live on and once again incarnate in the lives of all people. I have witnessed so much of this love coming alive in the lives of ordinary people these last couple of weeks. Not so long ago, all we heard was talk of division, nothing else. And now what do we hear mainly? People coming together in love. Something born from the ashes, some hope born from the ashes of despair, love born from 
destruction, and despair. Back to Palm Sunday. There is more to the Holy Week narrative than the concept of universal love born again at Easter. It's not just a mythos about eat about Jesus, it's also about the crowd, you know, this story, this, this Palm Sunday story. All, and, all, and the Holy Week story is not just a story about him, it's about all the people that surrounded him. People just like you and me, just like them, we can all get caught up in a crowd mentality, can we not? We can all identify with this crowd despite the world in which we live in being very different today. We share a common humanity with them all. We are all formed from the same breath of life. We all have the divine spark within us. Well, at least, at least I believe that we do. But none of us are gods. Although we can become the light of the world if and when we live in love. We are fully human just like the folks on the side of the street waving their palms, grateful for any reason to celebrate. People looking for joy, people looking for meaning, People looking for love, people who just like us are prone to disappointment, who fail to live up to the very ideals they should they should they would like to strive for, people who fall short, get ill and become bogged down in little and bigger things, finite human beings, people who are looking for hope to lift them out of their suffering, people looking for someone or something to lead them to better things, to give them another chance to live better lives. There's been much talk of this, the, this these last few weeks, especially as we've had to stay locked down at home. No doubt we've all fallen short at times. I certainly have. And we've all cheered at the side of the road. We were cheering for our National Health Service and all those other people, all those great, wonderful people out there trying to help in this time of struggle and pain. All those different people got we cheered for them, we stood outside and we cheered and we clapped and what a wonderful thing that was. May we do that every week. But we've also fallen short. All of us have messed up and wish we could live out to our ideals. Even if it's just in our own homes, falling out with one another. But we can live up to our ideals, you know. Just think about those wonderful words in the poem Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. Great wisdom. And here's a bit more wisdom from her. Words that strike deep in my soul on, on the subject of forgiveness for those times when we all fall short and others fall short too. She writes. She wrote. I don't know if I continue even today always liking myself. What I learned to do many years ago was to forgive myself. It is very important for every human being to forgive herself or himself, because if you live, you will make mistakes. It is inevitable. But once you do and you see the mistake and you forgive yourself and say, well, if I'd, if I'd known better, I'd have done better. That's all. So you say to people you think you may have injured, I am sorry. And then you say to yourself, I am sorry. If we all hold on to the mistake, we can't see our own glory in the mirror because we have the mistake between our faces and the mirror. We can't see what we're capable of being. You can ask forgiveness of others, but in the end, the real forgiveness is in one's own self. I think that young men and women are so caught by the way they see themselves. And mind you, when a larger society sees them as unattractive, as threats, as too black or too white or too poor or too fat or too thin or too sexual or too asexual, that's rough. But you can overcome that. The real difficulty is to overcome how you think about yourself. If we don't have that, we never grow, we never learn, and we sure as heck we should never teach. Wise woman, wise woman indeed. We can get over what others feel about us. Can we get over what we feel about ourselves? This is so the key, I believe. This sense of forgiveness and wholeness, this sense that deep down we're actually okay. They are essential if we wish to keep on rising. We all fall down, 
at times. We all fall down many times. We all give in sometimes. But what we need is a sense of true forgiveness just to come in again. If we want to start over again, if we want to rise again, knowing that the wave will come. What I sense so often when people come talking to me is that they are not just wanting to unburden themselves, but are looking for a real sense of forgiveness, to be able to start again, to be redeemed from all those things that hold them back from being the loving people we are all capable of being. Maybe this is something to think about in this time of physical isolation. What are the regrets that we are carrying with us? The things that need healing? The forgiveness that needs to be sought and offered? The reconciliation that needs to be made? Maybe this is something we can commit to in the coming weeks. It would be a wonderful use of our time. And the essence of the story of Palm Sunday and the week that follows, that leads to Easter, we find this deep in this story. This idea of redemption, this idea of love coming again. But sadly, we're going to have to wait a little longer for Easter this year. Maybe we can make a virtual Easter in some other way by, by finding it within ourselves. We can begin again, we can start anew, we can forgive and we can be forgiven for our very own human mistakes and shortcomings, for our betrayals of love, however it manifests in this our imperfect world. It means that we will get things wrong sometimes, lots of times, but if we pay attention, maybe next time we'll do a bit better. If we work at it, we can see our own glory in the mirror. We can begin to see what we're capable of be being. We can begin to recognise that we truly are children of love. We can begin again in love. No matter how many times we fall, we can rise again. We can bear those, those waves. Palm Sunday, this, this week, this holy week as they call it in the Christian tradition, begins in glory and celebration. But it quickly moves on to betrayal, denial, torture, and brutal death. Love and compassion is destroyed by the end of it, by the end of it, at the end of it. But it does rise again. And far more powerfully than it than ever before. For love will always rise again. No matter how many waves come and knock it down. Amen. Just going to close with some final words of blessing. We don't bless enough, you know. We ought to bless more. We ought to bless everyone and everyone can bless. Everyone can bless with their loving presence. Why not try offering blessings for the next week, for the rest of your lives? We'll begin today. Begin today the next conversation. Bless them with your loving presence. I invite us just to still ourselves one final time. O oh God, so touch us with the soul's eternal springtime that no wintry hour of life shall blight our faith or freeze our hearts. And may we carry the vision of this love with us, the vision of love for life. And may we do so in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, in all that we do. Amen. Still I rise, still I rise, still I rise. <laughs>